right now. I got one of my boys, LeVar Arrington, formerly with the NFL Network, now Long Beach Poly linebacker coach. <laughs> LeVar, thanks for joining me, man. Hi, E. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> How you doing, E? I, I, I'm holding on and, and, and feeling pretty well. How are you? How, how are you uh, seeing the world right now? How are you seeing this Al Jazeera thing with these guys being suspended, LeVar? Well, I got to tell you, I'm feeling like it's really, really unconstitutional, Eric Davis. That's not constitutional at all. I mean, these people's rights are in, 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 they're just it's in shambles, I tell you. The NFL is going, it's going to hell. Okay, stop it. Now, how do you really think? Uh, you know, to be honest, Abe, I, when, when you look at these type of things, you know, I've always fell on the side of doing things the right way. And if your employer who provides you the ability to make a living and one fine living at that, by, by the way. Um, if there's something that you need to go interview about, whether, whether people want to call it an evil empire or a dictatorship or whatever it is that they want to kind of justify what Roger Goodell is, Roger Goodell, if people are looking at what the growth of, of the sport, uh, what the growth of, of the National Football League's revenue and how it's been generating um, more money, it's been it's been since he's taken over, and I, I was under the, the Tagovailoa um, regime. You came in under that yeah. regime, I think. You you might have been uh, stop it before. Stop <laughs> it. With it. All right, but but, see, but but when but when you look at what what they're doing, I think a lot of times when when, when you get into complicated issues that that become public knowledge and people are able to debate it a lot of times and, and i say this with the most respect and and sensitivity that you possibly can say it with is that people don't understand business they don't understand what people who run a court if you run a corporation that that generates a hundred thousand dollars a year or a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, there are a ton of responsibilities that are connected to that company actually being able to generate that type of money. Now, when you take and you say we have 32 owners, which they're owners of a business, and this one person has to govern those businesses and govern the nonprofit side of it at, at Park, um, I think people – don't even have begin to have the understanding and the knowledge to be able to come up with educated assessments of some of the things that that have to be done or are being done that are reported in in the media bottom line if it's a quick bottom line you work for the national football league as long as you work for the national football league and you have the ability to make money working under the shield um Chances are you should cooperate with with certain things, uh, especially if it has to do with with this subject matter. Just go do the interview. I, I'll, I'll understand if there's something that is so seriously wrong um, morally as it applies to a family member or something to that effect. Why you may want want to take more of a stance, but if you're talking about uh, you know this subject matter, just go do the interview. Just go do the interview. What do you have to hide? What do you have to lose? You get a chance to go meet Roger, go shake his hand, <laughs> see if you could get a job at, at, at the you know the building once you're done playing, whatever it may be, or they can help you in other things that you're doing. Why not just cooperate? I just when people are so adversarial, it kind of gets kind of old to me. Yeah, no, I, I agree with what you're saying on that aspect of it. As I said, I, I would hate that the fact that I was put in that position and had to do it, but you don't have a choice. You got to go talk to him. And at the end of the day, I would go sit down and talk to him. Angry, but I'd talk to him because you sure. have no choice. I'm talking to LeVar Arrington. Uh, this is the Rich Eisen Show. I am Eric Davis. LeVar had seven years in the NFL. You were number two pick of the draft. We all, and you, you remind us of that all the time. Thank you. Three-time three, three pro bowler, um, uh, three-time all-pro. Uh, Thank you. You're a pretty good player, man. You you actually I were. Was right. once, once upon I was a, all right. Well, yeah, you were okay. Once upon a time, you could play um, before you gained all the weight. 
yeah. and, and the yeah. legs. And my upper body. Yeah, yeah just only I, the I upper body. I beat you to it. I beat you to it. <laughs> you did. You knew where I was going. I was going to get yeah, on your skinny yeah. legs. That's like Eminem. I got to beat you to it. Yeah. I'm going to say it before you do. You beat me to it. So I was going to talk about your legs. Instead, now I'm okay. going to go on the field. I'm going to talk about uh, Robert Griffin the third legs. And, you, and his legs. Yeah, okay. you you were there. I mean, you saw him up close and personal in Washington. I know you, you sort of keep a keep your finger on the pulse of that organization um, after being a part of it for so long. He, do you think you, we will see a resurgence of that guy that we saw as a rookie in Cleveland? No, I don't. I think realistically looking at it, I've, I've said it and I've been on record as being too harsh or too critical or not, not a lover of how things panned out with Robert Griffin III. He needed someone to develop him as a quarterback before he got to the NFL. And then once he got to the NFL, he needed more of someone to develop him as an NFL quarterback. You don't think Hugh Jackson can do that? uh, At this point in his career, I think it's just going to be difficult because, for one, we, we all know once you once you come into the league, the, the longer you're in the league, the, the harder it is to convince a grown man of certain things that they need to do. And, and even even harder than convincing them, once you convince them, that for what it's worth, it's hard to break those type of habits. And he doesn't have, I mean, I, just speaking bluntly, he doesn't have uh, NFL quality habits. You know, it, 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 we've done numerous film studies on on Robert Griffin III. We broke the film down on him quite a bit. True. I think that unless you have unless you have it in you where that that personal timer in your head says, "Okay, here are my reads. I'm going through my progressions. Boom, time's up. Throw it away. You know, get on the ground, run, slide. One of those things. His is get the ball." Look at my first receiver, my first option. He's not there. Uh, oh, I feel pressure. I'm running. That's his options. Those those are the options that he has shown. I'm not making this up. Go watch any film. That's what he does. I don't know that they can break him out of that habit. And if that's what he is as a quarterback in the National Football League, those type of quarterbacks aren't able to have a, a long measure of success in the game. It was the running attack. That led to his success in his rookie season. So the same the same principle that we're looking at as it applies to Robert Griffin III, which was the element of the unknown, was the reason why I believe he was able to have so much success so early in his career. When you look at Kirk Cousins, it's going to be interesting to, to see what Kirk Cousins is able to do as it applies to now being the incumbent quarterback for the Washington Redskins because there's now film. I said that Wildcat would ruin people's careers because once these defensive coordinators get enough film on it, they are going to realize that all you need to do is hit the quarterback. Hit the quarterback, we'll worry about the yardage and all that stuff later. If, if a guy gets 30, 40 yards, but and not 30, 40 yards, we've hit your quarterback four or five times, uh, you have a decision you have to make. So the same thing goes with, with Kirk Cousins. Now that there is film on him and he had such a strong – performance last year um, as the first year uh, quarterback for them. I think that it now comes back to will Kirk Cousins be able to raise his game high enough to have the success that he did before people got film on him and, and had an entire off season to study him. So, but if I were a person that was saying, okay, this person has more of an opportunity to be successful over the other, Kirk Cousins has a plethora, an, an array, a diverse, a, a, a wide range of talent on that team, from Jackson to Garcon mm-hmm. to, to Reed. It, they get Niles Paul back this year. Um, they have some weapons on that team. Crowder, I don't know if they're all going to be able to be on the roster. That will be an interesting storyline to follow. But if there's anybody in the NFL that has um, a, a nice opportunity with the group of guys that is in that locker room and in that huddle with him, you'd have to assume that Kirk Cousins is going to be the guy. But as far as, as Robert Griffin III, I just, you know, if he went to a team where there was a weaker, it was a weaker division like the Eagles or somewhere within the NFC East, 
or or another, you know, a division that where you could sit there and say, you know, it may be a top heavy division, maybe like the NFC South that has a few good teams, but you can also put, you know, points on the board. You can get yards up on the board and do th- things like that. I would say maybe Robert Griffin the third has an opportunity, but you go to the one team that is the worst team <laughs> in one of the <laughs> toughest divisions Jeez. in all of, of the NFL. It doesn't make sense to say that a guy that was struggling in the NFC East can go to the worst team in the AFC North and have success against Pittsburgh, against Cincinnati, and against Baltimore. And even though Baltimore is still rebuilding, it's still Baltimore, and it's still the AFC North. Yeah, it just—it's not a good recipe at all. No, I didn't—I didn't say it was going to be easy. Okay, Lavar Arrington, we're talking to three-time Pro Bowler on the Rich Eisen Show. Hey, LeVar, it's Law. I got one for you. You mentioned Baltimore there. You got two guys on the Ravens coming back from Achilles and Steve Smith Sr. and Terrell Suggs. You yourself suffered uh, an Achilles injury in your last year of your career. What are these guys up against coming back, especially at the respective ages of 37 and 33? I don't put anything past either one of those guys. You know, when I blew out my Achilles tendon, I sat there, and the minute I realized it was my tendon, I was done. That was it. The only way I would come back was if if the mayor and the Tish family really, really wanted me to come back. I would have honored my contract and tried to come back. But it felt like air was let out of a tire. I don't I don't have a tire and I don't know what that really feels like in literal sense. But if I could think of what it felt like like when I I I popped a tire before I, I heard what it sounded like. That's what I compared it to in my head, and I don't. I, I, I still don't feel like I had the bounce in that that foot that I did before I blew my Achilles tendon. Now that's just me. You know, people's bodies react to to injuries and 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 you know traumas differently. Um, I've seen people come back and be able to have successful careers. I know for me. I would look at it more from a long-term perspective. Can they come back and play well? What are they up against? Well, they're up against dealing with the the maintenance and the pain that they're going to deal with um, playing with a repaired tendon, which is the biggest one in your body, by the way. But but to me, I look at these guys, and it's more long-term. Like, will they be able to get through a season or two? Steve Smith can get through three, four more seasons. That's just how tough he is. Terrell says, same thing. It's just how tough those guys are. Um, it's just reason to know that putting that wear and tear on something that has been prepared, um, you're going to have to deal with the longstanding um, effects of, of that type of an injury. And I, I'll tell you what, every once in a while, I mean, it took me like three years for me to feel normal after after I ruptured mine, and, and it was not a game. That's some different type of pain. I've never been – a crier, um, I, I actually had moments where tears were coming out of my eyes because of how painful that uh, that injury was, you know. And so, uh, but but you know what? With that being said, again, everybody reacts to things differently. So I, I can't I can't imagine they wouldn't come back and have enough pride in them um, if they're coming out there to play um, that they wouldn't play at a, as high a level as they possibly can, which is probably good enough for them to improve that team this year. Well, that's LeVar Aronson. 2000, wasn't it 2000 when, when you were the second overall pick? That was it in, just was constitutional for me to it, go It was 2000, 2000. yeah. That's the number two pick. There you go, the number two overall and pick the of the... Capital, Eric Davis. Yeah, of the NFL draft, number two pick. I appreciate you joining me, man. I'll, always good to talking to you. Poly. Long Beach Holly. There, there it is. Like Jackrabbits. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, get get to work, man. Thanks for joining us today. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience. <laughs>